I'd like to welcome you all to the United Methodist Church of Bismarck, North Dakota. Okay. And, uh, oh, oh no, we're not. We're not in North Dakota. Oh, 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 we're, oh my God. We're in, we're in Duchess County, New York, and it's one oh, degree. Some of or us whatever. are in Greenland. Yeah, it's in our uh, Greenland. That's right. Greenland's warmer. Uh, yeah, this is definitely Yukon territory. <laughs> so. Well, welcome, brothers and sisters. It's great to see you again, and uh, we are gathered for worship after a flurry of technical uh, pirouetting, I guess you, you would call it, and uh, we're all proud of one another because we know how to do this now, pretty much, and uh, uh, the, rest, the rescue is complete. We still have a few more people uh, coming on, and uh, so uh, we are ready to go. Um, I think what we'll do is we'll use our uh, musical intro today to set the mood for worship. So uh, let us open our hearts to the Lord as we hear the beautiful music of our intro today. Uh, many gifts, one spirit. Beautiful music to start our worship today. Once again, welcome to this gathering of the Southeastern Duchess Cooperative Parish Churches and uh, Pastor Kathy Meyerson and I, Pastor Parker Prout, are delighted to be with you on this very frigid day, but uh, a day of sunshine and a day of warmth as we gather around the 
uh, warmth of our computers and our iPads and our phones to worship the Lord and uh, raise our voices in prayer. Let us center our hearts and minds uh, as we begin the worship of our Lord with our call to worship. Please join me. Gift giver, you call us together. With our different gifts, our different ideas, our different tastes. You call us together. To share to what share makes us special. special. To build up each, each other. To serve, to serve each, each other, other in, love. in love. You call us together. Knowing that we need all all parts parts of the body body, if we are to be be male. You call us together. To to sing, sing, to to pray, pray, to to listen, listen, to speak, to speak, to be refreshed. refreshed So that that we we can go go out out and serve and serve. You call us together. In the name, the name of, the one of the one who taught, who us, taught us the way, way of life. Let us pray together. Heavenly, Heavenly Father, Father, help me to surrender, to my, surrender life. my life to you, to you and, use and use the, the gifts, gifts and graces, and graces with which, which I have been blessed. blessed. With, with wisdom, wisdom and, and for your greater, your greater glory. glory. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you that I am part, of the, I am part of the wider body of Christ. Christ. Thank you. Thank you. That we are being fitted, fitted together, together as, as your, your holy dwelling, dwelling place. place. I, I pray, pray that, that together, together we may learn to use, to use our spiritual our gifts. gifts. With the benefit of the whole whole body body. and rejoice rejoice that we are one One in Christ Christ. through through time time and and into into eternity. eternity. In In Christ's name, name. Amen. amen. Let us now have our opening hymn as a fire is meant for burning. If you have a hymnal handy, it's the faith we sing, 2237.
Our New Testament lesson is from 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and will be read by Jack Carlson. Now, about the gifts of the Spirit, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were pagans, somehow or other, you were influenced and led astray to mute idols. Therefore, I want you to know that no one who is speaking by the Spirit of God says, Jesus be cursed. And no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working. But in all of them and in everyone, it is the same God at work. Now, to each one, that manifestation of the spirit is given for the common good. To one, there is given through the spirit a message of wisdom. To another, a message of knowledge by means of the same spirit. To another, faith by the same spirit. To another, gifts of healing by that one spirit. To another, miraculous powers to another prophecy, to another distinguishing between spirits, to another speaking in different kinds of tongues, and to still another, the interpretation of tongues. All these are the work of one and the same spirit, and he distributes them to each one just as he determines. And our gospel lesson this morning is from John Chapter two, and will be read by Nadia Carlson. On the third day, a wedding took place at Cana in Galilee. Jesus's mother was there and Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine was gone, Jesus's mother said to them, they have no more wine. Woman, why do you involve me? Jesus replied, my hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, do whatever he tells you. Nearby stood six stone water jars, the kind used by the Jews for ceremonial washing, each holding from 20 to 30 gallons. Jesus said to the servants, fill the jars with water so they filled them to the brim. Then he told them, now draw some out and take it to the master of the banquet. His mother said to the servants, do whatever he tells you. Nearby stood six stone water jars, the kind used by the Jews for ceremonial washing, each holding from 20 to 30 
gallons. Jesus said to the servants, fill the jars with water so that so they filled them to the brim. Then he told them, now draw some out and take it to the master of the banquet. They did so. And the master of the banquet tasted the water that had been turned into wine. He did not realize where it had come from, though the servants who had drawn the line knew. Then he called the bridegroom aside and said, everyone brings out the choice wine first, and then the cheaper wine after the guest have had too much to drink, but you have saved the best till now. What Jesus did here in Cana, in Cana of Galilee was the first of the signs through which he revealed his glory and his disciples believed in him. The word of God to the people of God. Thanks, Thanks Peter. Be to God. Mm-hmm. This is one of my favorite readings to um, preach on, to live by. I feel one of my gifts um, given from God, my spiritual gifts, is the ability to pull out or see and make others see the gifts that they were given so that they can share them. Um, When I was teaching, I always made it a point to let my students know that they had special gifts, talents, skills, and we would figure it out either together or they might already know. And we would discuss, well, I taught health to make it fair. This was, you know, for their um, their mental health, their self-esteem and whatever. I would make sure that we would discuss ways that these gifts could help them in their lives. Um, This week, we're exploring more deeply what it means to be gifted by the Holy Spirit. So let us, if, if the first thing is, if somebody gives you a gift and you choose not to use it, that's kind of a slap in the face to the gift giver. You really want to let God know you don't appreciate what he has given you. Now, the gifts that were mentioned um, to the church in Corinth were identifiable, uh, identifiable for that community in the first century in Corinth. But it's not an exhaustive list. It's not everything that God gives us. The church in Corinth was an interesting place. They had quite a few (laughs) issues. Um, It was, let me give you a brief sketch of who Paul was addressing. Corinth is about 40 miles southwest of of Athens. It's on the Gulf of Corinth. And in Paul's time, it was a hub of commercial and religious activity. Corinth was a home to artisans, especially metal workers, um, potters, but also because it's near the sea, it's a home to many of the merchants, the ships that would come in, the sailors that would love Corinth and stay um, there. So they had a lot of diverse community. They brought with them their various religious beliefs, their various talents. Uh, And modern archaeologists have found even evidence of Egyptian and Greek religious shrines, in addition to the Roman um, works that we know of. But it also had a strong Jewish community. Uh, It was an economically thriving, multicultural, multi-religious community. And because of its closeness to Athens, which was the the governmental center of Roman life. But even with all of these 
positives, it had a very bad reputation. In fact, it was known by what we would call in modern times, Sin City. So it was filled with these upwardly mobile immigrants from all over the empire, transitory business people, sailors and the like. It was known as the new, what we would call the new money um, people. Now those outside looking in, do, they thought of Corinth as rather shallow. Its inhabitants had wealth without culture. Um, they didn't have deeply rooted social structures. And the abuse of the poor by the wealthy was a common theme. Now, documents from the period have characterized the people of Corinth as lacking a certain grace and charm. Today, we'd say they just weren't sophisticated. Now, like most communities, the church in Corinth also went by these cultural uh, norms, um, which is to say they had problems. Basically, uh, you could say the Christian church in Corinth exhibited these same problems. All kinds of believers in the Corinthian church went by this steep social pyramid. Very few of the Christian believers were on the high end of that pyramid. Now, they didn't have their own church buildings, so the people in the Corinth congregation would meet at someone's house to discuss um, those who have actually met Jesus, had actually met Jesus, and also tell the stories of those that they knew of or heard from that had met Jesus. Now, the social status and the wealth play a big part uh, in the rich, as the rich enjoyed the protection of the judicial system, the political system served the wealthy over the poor. Um, and likewise, in the church, only the really wealthy people had homes and staff that were large enough to host these church gatherings. Of course, the <laughs> wealthy and uh, those that had staff to serve were the ones who provided the homes over a meal for their religious suppers. Well, guess what happens? The religious, the wealthy, they didn't have to work all day, so they would call for these services early in the day, where their other wealthy friends that didn't have to work would come early. And how many of us sit around a supper without eating? So there were the, these stories that they're relating to each other and eating all of the best of the food were basically serving the wealthy in the community. Now, when the workers those who toiled, the less wealthy, would come to the meeting to share their stories. Um, guess what? The food and the best wine and all were already gone. And yet, these were the people that needed that food. They, they were the ones that didn't have the money to supply their own needs. They had to work later and therefore they were missing out on the part that they needed. Well, this caused frustration and who, you know, wouldn't be frustrated. The people that needed it literally weren't getting fed. 
Now, just like in the larger culture, the wealthy weren't caring. They didn't have much regard for taking care of the poorer members of the church. And so this social pyramid extended to include different roles and abilities of the people in the congregation. Apparently, there was a sense that some people's gifts and abilities were more valuable than the others. Here, Paul writes to his church to have them or encourage them to value each person in the community as a unique gift to God. Understanding that every single person had something really important to bring to the whole body of Christ, the whole body of the church, the whole body of the financial committee meetings or whatever it was that these gifts could be used for. He tells them that those who have the leisure of knowing more shouldn't be seeing themselves as being more important than those who don't have those same gifts. He tells them that they are all equally important in the eyes of God. Then he encourages them to treat one another with the same respect with which God treats all of his children. The context of this for us today is to see how Paul's words to the believers in Corinth apply to us. Because we're just like the Corinthians in so many ways. Being humans, we have all kinds of issues and attitudes that challenge those Corinthian Christians. And we are all God's children. And we're all endowed with gifts and talents with which to share. The reality is that the Holy Spirit doesn't distribute gifts, or does, sorry, does distribute gifts to one and all of us. Gifts of many, many kinds. And every one of us here has been endowed with gifts and talents from God. And these gifts are absolutely necessary for the success of our church and our mission of making disciples for Christ. We have what we need to build up our community and accomplish God's mission, which he has set out for us. The good news is that Jesus Christ is the great equalizer. As we read, for in the spirit, we were all baptized into one body, Jews or great Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. It's from 1 Corinthians chapter 12. That means that we're, whatever we have to offer, whatever gift we bring to the table, however big or small, noticeable or quiet, visible or invisible, is sufficient. Whatever we have to bring is enough. Whatever you bring, wherever you show up, even if it's late in the day and you're tired and all you have to bring is your complaints, your tears, that is sufficient. Just as sufficient, and I lost you all here, 
um, just as sufficient as what anyone else has to bring to the meeting. Our church needs each and every one of you. Take that to heart. We need you and your spiritual gifts. So bring them. Wear them proudly. Bring them to share with all the rest of us. Amen. Let us now, all right, let us now sing our hymn, I'm going to live so God can use me. This is a, 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 a poem or a prayer that we shared at the uh, parish council meeting this week. And uh, I think it sums up a lot of our theme about spiritual gifts and so forth today. A tree is a beautiful image of parts working together for the good of the whole. The roots anchor the tree and seek nourishment from the soil. The trunk draws up the nourishment up and out to the very tips of the branches. The leaves gain strength from this and gather energy from the sunshine amid the air. Each part must remain aware of the other's role. None can exist without the others. Barren in the darkness of the earth, the roots Feel the kiss of the sun, ever reaching upward and outward, the branches remember what anchors and sustains them. Thank you. Let us pray together. Let us take these prayers that we have lifted 
uh, in front of our brothers and sisters and, and also those that are still in our hearts and lift them up to the Lord. Almighty and loving God, we are here with you today. And once again, we are enjoying the many gifts and graces you have bestowed upon us. And we ask your help to pass these along and share them with our brothers and sisters in the communities that we serve and all those in need. We lift up the names of those that need your healing so desperately. We lift up names of those that need your protection as they travel, as they work, and as they serve one another. We ask for your gifts in all of this. And again, praise you for the many skills and talents that you have bestowed upon this church. Continue to stimulate us to share these and reach out and nourish others in all that we do to bring the word of the goodness of the mission and example that Jesus has put in front of us, that we study and learn and hear your word of each and every week. Let us follow Christ's example in all that we do. Let us be examples of the hope, joy, love, and peace that he taught so long ago. Be with us, Heavenly Father, in all of our works, in all of our times, and allow us to love one another and even love the stranger that we have yet to meet. And we close by saying the prayer that our Savior Christ has taught us to pray so long ago. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our closing hymn is Christ from whom all blessings flow.
words of Charles Wesley. And for our benediction, all gifts are from the same spirit. They are each a part of the whole and given to each of us for each other or for the common good. Lord, guide us so that we may share these gifts you give to welcome disciples to your kingdom. Amen. Let us now share our greetings with each other. Amen. And stay safe and <laughs> stay safe and stay healthy, everyone. Yes. You Check well. on your neighbors. <laughs> Hi, Diane. Hi, Priscilla. Hi, Hi Carmen. Hi. Hey, Good morning, everyone. Sunday, fun day. How are you?